unexcelled victory in battle. That's one of the Buddha's names for the Noble Eightfold Path. And it's good to keep that in mind. All too often Dhamma practice is viewed as simple acceptance. We basically give up on any kind of battle and say, well, things are just going to pass away. They're inconstant, impermanent. There's nothing really worth getting out there anyhow, which is very defeatist. The Buddha definitely said there are things that are worth getting. It's simply a matter of directing our minds in the right direction and understanding what real victory is. There's a Pali term, atta, A-T-T-H-A, which means goal and purpose and benefit. It also means meaning. The Buddha taught his teachings with a purpose, so people will take them and put it into suffering. And the question is, are we going to make that our purpose too? Because we all have purposes. When the Buddha talks about how we fabricate the present moment, he said it's always for the purpose of something. We're hoping to get someplace. We don't just sit here. Even when he tells you to make your mind like earth, it's for a purpose. And the purpose isn't the earth. The purpose is to learn how to watch things carefully. The problem is we have lots of other purposes besides the Buddha's purpose, other ideas of what victory could be. We have to remember the really worthwhile victory is victory inside. When they talk about the armies of Mara, it's basically the fifth column inside you. You're trying to find freedom. There are parts of the mind that are trying to keep you tied down. So you have to regard them as traitors, as enemies. You can't take them on, you can't identify with them. So there is a battle. But winning the battle inside doesn't mean that you give up on winning some things outside. You look at the Buddha. After getting awakening, he just didn't just give up. He set out the teaching, walked all over northern India for 45 years. teaching individuals, setting up the Sangha. You read his experiences having to do with all the questions and all the problems that the monks and the nuns created. So it wasn't the case that he simply said, well, I'm going to have a victory over myself and who cares about the rest of the world. He had the strength inside, having gained victory over himself, then he had the strength inside to look at what really needed to be done, what would be the wisest thing to do. And that way his actions were a lot more effective than they would have been otherwise. So when you're dealing with issues outside, remember that the first victory comes inside, but that doesn't mean you give up on issues outside. You just try to get the mind in a better position where it can look at things and then figure out what would be the best thing to do, what would be the best thing to say. And when you don't let all of your narratives get in the way, all of your attachments get in the way, it's a lot easier to see. So look at this practice as a kind of victory, starting inside and then moving outside, but with the main emphasis being on the inside. Because there are a lot of things in the world that you can't change. You can say the wisest thing possible, and sometimes people will not react in a very wise way. And that's something you simply have to accept. There are a lot of people out there that will never be changed. There are a lot of things in the world that will never be changed. We can't make our happiness depend on trying to change them. Start working with something that should be a lot more malleable, which is your own mind. Look into your own greed, your own aversion, your own delusion. Use the tools of the path. 
create that sense of well-being inside that allows you to do work comfortably here in the present moment. And realize that the victory over every little defilement in the mind is really worth it. I was talking with someone the other day saying that she wanted to figure out how to take care of all forms of, <coughs> all forms of greed all at once. And I said, no, they're going to be individual cases. And she gave me this despairing look. It means I have to deal with all my defilements? Yep, you've got to deal with all your defilements. Because greed takes lots of different guises, has lots of different strategies, lots of different ways of insinuating itself into your good graces. And the same with anger, the same with delusion. And you have to learn how to see through these things, which is why we keep practicing. It's not the case that one single insight is going to take care of everything. It's a practice of gaining little victories here and little insights there. And things begin to connect. As they connect, then it goes deeper and deeper into the mind. You find some of the common ground among all these defilements. That's when the practice gets a lot more focused. But in the beginning, it's like a mother hen trying to gather all her chickens under her wings. She gets this chicken and that chicken, ah, that little, that little chicken goes away. Gets that one, ah, another one's gone away. It can be frustrating at times. But as I say in Thai, you have to, so you put yourself in a good mood and smile at the tigers. In other words, even though the, the battles you're doing sometimes seem very daunting, you don't let that get you down. Because we have the example of the Buddha, we have the example of the noble disciples, that these battles can be won. And sometimes they may seem superhuman. But you have to remember, they're not. They were, were human beings. They are human beings. It's simply that they've taken qualities that we have in a mild form, and they've learned how to strengthen them. And the important thing was they learned to identify inside who are the traitors in the mind. You have to regard them that way. They're friendly and they're nice. Those are the ones you have to watch out for. They promise you instant pleasure. But then, as John Lee says, they get you doing unskillful things. And it's a case of someone who gets you to commit a crime, and then when the police come after you, they run away, leaving you with the evidence. And you're the one who gets punished. In other words, your unskillful actions are going to come back at you. It's, they're not going to come back and harm your greed, aversion, and delusion. So learn to look for the troublemakers inside, what John Lee calls the, the thieves, the con men. Learn how to figure them out. And when you kind of identify them as something that you really don't want to identify with, then you put yourself in a position where you can actually do battle with them. Up to that point, it's like trying to do battle with your own arm or your own stomach. That's how it feels. You're doing battle with me, 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 and the me in there just keeps complaining, well, why are you doing battle with me? Because after all, aren't I you? But you have to realize, no, you have the choice to identify or not with the unskillful qualities of your mind, and it's good to see them as something separate. That's how you get to know them, really understand them, really observe them, so you can come out victorious over them. Because there is such a thing as long-term happiness. That's the beginning of wisdom, not just seeing that long-term is better than short-term, but also that long-term is possible. The idea that everything is simply inconstant and there's nothing really worth going for. That's not wisdom. The wisdom lies in seeing long-term is possible, and it's worth the effort. So 
So it's a matter of both of identifying the traders inside, but also identifying what is really worthwhile inside. When you have a victory, you want to have something to hold on to as, a, as the reward for your victory. In a state of well-being that's unaffected by change, that doesn't need to feed. That can be your reward. The irony, of course, is that once you get it, you don't have to hold on to it. In fact, if you try to hold on to it, you miss part of it. But it's there, and it doesn't leave you once you found it. That's what all the Ajahns have verified. That's what the Buddha's verified. So there is something that is worth gaining. There is something that is worth fighting for inside. And don't let the naysayers tell you otherwise, because they're armies of Mara as well. <laughs>